Hi everybody and welcome back to Greater Manchester Stories. This episode's amazing guest is a gentleman I met three years ago when I stood for mayor three years ago um, and he was standing for a party called the English Democrats and then a couple of weeks ago I bumped into him again and thought he'll be a great guest on my podcast. So first of all, welcome Stephen Morris to the show. Thank you, Nick. Thanks for having me. So let's get straight into your party because first of all, I like the title, English Democrats. Who Who isn't an English Democrat? Because I know I am. Um, what's the party? What does it stand for? What do you want? Well, the, the party was formed um, way back in 2002. And this, this was because of what happened with devolution, really, um, where Scotland and Wales, Scotland got its own parliament, Wales got its assembly. Northern Ireland got its assembly. England was completely ignored. We haven't got one. And what was happening was uh, Scottish, Welsh, Northern Irish MPs were voting on purely English issues, as they do today, which we think was completely undemocratic because we can't vote on theirs. So originally we wanted a federal UK. So we wanted the all the nations to have their own uh, parliaments to look after their own local affairs. But then to have, say, a UK Parliament, and this would have been this would have formed with uh, reforming the House of Lords. So we would have reformed the House of Lords to become a UK Parliament, and the House of Commons. So there's no new Parliament would become the English Parliament once again. Um, and that way, you still keep the United Kingdom as it was, but with equal, equal nations, four equal Parliaments looking after local affairs, and. But the thing was, we weren't getting really any any traction with that. And a lot of our members were saying, well, Scotland and the SNP are going for independence. And England is actually the major uh, funder of all the nations in a way. If you look at the Barnet formula and the Barnet consequentials, we massively fund Scotland, Wales and Northern Ireland. And so we did then the party decided, well, well the members, because the, unlike the other parties, we can't change policy without the members vote. So if we wanted to change a policy, say, for these, these elections coming up, we can't do that. Uh, the, the National Council can't do it. So they, they then voted to have go for independence because we said, really, England is really a wealthy nation. It's, it's a prosperous nation. And if we stop funding Scotland, Wales and Northern Ireland, let them fund themselves off their own taxes, then we, we can do great things, you know, sort out the NHS public transport. Uh, housing, education, the full work. We could look at doing a lot of things. So we decided on that. And then the, the term, people say, well, English, what is English? Well, in our manifesto, people, people first of all, see the word English and think, oh, it's only ethnic English. Well, we don't. If, if you look at our party, it's, um, the chairman wasn't born in England. Um, the membership secretary wasn't born in England. The previous treasurer wasn't born in England. Most of the NC wasn't actually born in England. Because we have various categories. There's obviously ethnic English people who are born in England. There's also people who come here to make England their home, to be part of a community. They want the English way of life. You know, we oh, over the years, people have talked about the Windrush people coming here, you know, from, from the Commonwealth countries. Well, they came here for the British way of life, didn't they? A lot of them came here for a new life, new beginning for the British way of life, and they wanted to be part of this Britishness. Well, we, we work on the same concept that, well, actually, if they're coming to England, we want to be part of this English community, part of part of England. And we look at them the, the same way, that they are English. And there was actually in the, I think it was 2012 Commonwealth Games, the Common, uh, England Commonwealth team did a really brilliant video, and I keep saying to our party, I wish we'd have done it. And it had all the athletes from uh, different backgrounds, different ethnic backgrounds, different religious backgrounds, all training, and all it kept saying is, we are England, we are England. And that was the England team, and we look at England as, in the same way, you know. Um, so well, one of the things is, is when anybody looks at the word English, they automatically think ethnic English. They think of the EDL, which we don't associate with in a way, um, never have done, never will do. So we that's how we we look at ourselves and we want people to be part of this english community and, and develop england in, into a wealthy nation so so basically you're you're the english version well you're not as mental as this but you're, you're, you're the english version of the smp plaid cymru 
because what you want is to put your country first above the larger nation that that, that we call Great Britain UK and and technically there's nothing wrong with that no um we our policies are very central obviously by Cymru and SNP more on the left of politics and when you look at our um manifesto it's very much central because we do accept that we do like to give businesses a bit more of a conservative you know a bit of a, a reign where they can go uh, develop make money create jobs and all that kind of thing but we also have a, a social responsibility to people so you know the, the old phrase of a safety net the social safety net to make sure that we help people up you know we, we give that assistance to help them up it's not just a case of giving them money you know it's a case of the, uh, if what do we need to help you and we we do that and we get criticized on other things like um obviously immigration's a big question that's going on at the minute and they say well what would we do well people for us if people are and it, again this is these are all in our manifestos if people are uh, running from war-torn countries or uh, turmoil that's happening within their nations why should they travel all across Europe to then get to here to then try and get a uh, safe sanctuary? Our policy is that actually, say, if there's a war in, say, North Africa, I'll use, say, Libya for an example, then we should be helping the countries next to Libya, right, to, to help the, the influx of people fleeing a war um, there. So we would help the nations there because we think that it's a lot safer to help the neighbouring nations with the people fleeing a conflict than it is to allow these people to travel thousands of miles and then risk their lives getting across in a channel before they get kind of sanctuary. Yeah. One of the last stats, one of the last stats I saw was it's it's a hundred times you can you can help a hundred people in a neighbouring country than it is to get them to come to the UK. That's how more expensive it is. So you can help you can help a hundred times more people by doing exactly what you just said then. Yeah. And we think it's more because once once you've it's like uh, some some have used the argument, say, well, if you if you're taking somebody, say, from Africa and you're dumping them, say, in the north of England, I'm sorry, but there's not just a cultural thing, there's a weather thing goes well. You know, uh, how many people would sort of uh, like the weather up in Northern England or in Scotland. But once their countries are, are become then a safe area, once again, once a war are finished or whatever, and we try to help them to rebuild, then they, the people may want to go back to their home. You know, obviously it's up to them. They may want to go back to their home. They may want to help to rebuild it they, because a rebuilding program will then create jobs. Here's, here's a radical idea that I've been promoting. How about we say to the people fleeing war, why don't you stay in your country and sort it out? Why don't we say to all these young fighting age men fleeing their countries, if we'd have done that during the First and Second World War, we'd have been called cowards and rightly so. Why don't you stay in your country, overthrow the government and turn it into a better country instead of being cowards and constantly running away somewhere else? Well, we know uh, a lot of the Ukrainian males have run away, haven't they? They've gone. Uh, they, they, they fled very early on. Um, but that gets into a completely another story about who of us. And none of this has got to do with the mayor of Greater Manchester. <laughs> well, the, the, the mayor, like, as, a, as most like, uh, mainstream politicians like the mayor and that, they like to get involved in international politics uh, when, it, when uh, to the local people, the only interested in what's happening in Greater Manchester, you know, why is knife crime on the rise? Why hasn't he sorted out the homeless issue that he's campaigned on two elections for? Exactly. Be before we get into Andy Burnham, and we're going to talk about Andy Burnham in a minute, and I definitely want to talk about Andy Burnham. Let let's end this conversation with devolution. I think devolution has been a huge failure in the UK. I think it's turned Scots against the English. I think it's turned some of the Welsh against the English. It's turned everyone against the English. And we've got to a stage now where the English are beginning to turn on the Scots, especially, and the Welsh and the Northern Irish, because it feels like we're being attacked all the time by then. I think devolution has split us into tribes. And when you split into tribes, you end up with tribal warfare. And 
I understand the aims of your party. And if we don't get rid of devolution, the then I'm fully on board with your party. But but that's a step. I'm not I'm not at that step yet. What I would like to do is end devolution, the get rid of the Scottish Parliament, the Welsh Assembly, and I would like to run the Isles of the UK as the UK. Um, that would be my first choice. But if we can't do that, then England deserves its own Parliament. It's um, the, the devolution. Um, it, it, they use the word devolution uh, for England, but it's not actually a proper devolution. Like I said at the beginning, uh, we want an English Parliament, so that's four equal nations. Now, we also want um, powers devolved down, so we don't want the English Parliament to be doing an awful lot. We want it to be do devolved down to town councils, parish councils, you know, the local councils. Um, and I know uh, you're campaigning on having a referendum for the mayor. Yeah. Now, um, our party, we support the elected mayor system. However, we do support the right of the people to decide first. You know, yeah. so I've I've run a couple of campaigns. We got the elected mayor for Salford. We we lost the one for Berry, mm. but I agree with you. We never had one voted on by the people for Greater Manchester. It was imposed with a, a backdoor deal between Labour and the Conservatives. Yeah, you know, and to me, yeah, it, we we should have a referendum on that because it's down to the people to decide. Yeah, but over the years we have seen powers, and this is why we. we when we talk about devolution, there's different devolutions because uh, in England it, it seems to be sucking power away from the councils because previously uh, my local council, Berry used to make decisions, then it went to the combined authority. They then got legal powers, then it came to the mayor, and more powers got sucked away from the people. So now uh, whoever you're voting in council have very little say, mm. and we've got to start dragging that back down. Um so, yeah, I, the, the de de devolution in England is not the same as devolution that Scotland and Wales got because England is being broken up into false regions. Mm. Uh, the, you know, the old county councils are disappearing. Uh, this identity, like me, I still I, I was actually born in Lancashire, but it was Trafford at the time. Yeah. Uh, but it was Lancashire. Um, but Greater Manchester is like a false identity. It's not working. I agree, mm. devolution within England is not working. Um, it, it's really a bad and it's costing an awful lot of money um, which, which we can, just can't afford I agree and that's why I support the campaign in Bolton at the moment run by Bolton for Change and yes. they want a referendum in Bolton about leaving Greater Manchester and going back to Lancashire County um, I don't know if that's a good idea or a bad idea but I support it because the people need to have a say um, that's what it's all about isn't it it's about the people having the yeah. say we're either Democrats or we're not. So yes. let's stop pretending we're Democrats when we, when, and then not listen to the people. You can't be both. You've got to be one or the other. Um, yeah. And I always believe that people will make better decisions than politicians and civil servants. I think, I think uh, was it Michael Grove? Grove has just come out recently and said uh, they should never give the people a referendum on anything. Well, that clearly seems yeah. he's, he doesn't believe in the democratic process or, or the voice of the people. Does because it? it makes their job harder, because suddenly they're not experts. Suddenly they're being told what to do by the people where they have their own idea. We, yeah. We've got to a stage in our country now where politicians seem to think they're our masters and overlords, where in reality they're our servants. They're not our yeah. overlords. And they've forgotten that one thing. And that's what I want to bring back during this mayoral election. Is remind and, and people. That, uh, yeah, sorry. Uh, and that, that term where they're in power, um, that needs to be rephrased. They're not in power. The the managers of the country. They're in service. On, they're in service, service to us. And they yeah. exactly they service to us. Yeah. Uh, if they every time they call it power, then it, that talks about control, control yeah. of, yeah. of the people. And we need less control by politicians. Now, yeah. if we're talking about control from politicians, let's talk about Andy Burnham. <laughs> So you've stood against Andy Burnham for the mayoralty twice, so three years yeah. ago and the four years before that. Um, mm. First of all, what do you make of Andy Burnham as a politician and has he improved Greater Manchester in seven years? He's had seven years now. Um, to me, he's just a showman. That, that's all he is. He's just a showman. He has no uh, substance about him. Um, in the, the two elections I stood, I obviously highlighted his 
failures as an MP, which he doesn't like highlighting because they are quite serious failures, uh, which people forget, uh, forget about. Would you, you know, like how, to, would you like to mention those failings so people yeah. might not know? Well, when he was health, well, when he was um, sports and culture secretary, um, bearing in mind he's from Liverpool, he refused to do an inquiry into Hillsborough. And obviously Hillsborough is a very contentious thing for Liverpool uh, and Liverpool fans. And he refused to do an inquiry. Now, he had the main opportunity to do that. He actually got booed off the pitch at a remembrance service for the for the Hillsborough uh, people who died. And he doesn't like being reminded of that um, because, as, a, as he says, he's a scouser um, from Liverpool, although he supports Everton. Um, to me, he should have done an inquiry into Hillsborough. You know, everybody was screaming for it to be done. The next one was when he was health secretary, he refused to do an inquiry into the Midstaff hospital crisis where there was chill, uh, babies dying. His own MPs were criticising him. They, they wouldn't, uh, he wouldn't do an inquiry. Um, so to me, that that's astonishing, you know, it, uh, excess baby deaths at a hospital. And in the end, uh, he didn't call it, but somebody else called it afterwards. And Midstaff's hospital got broken up. It got separated into different mm. trusts uh, because of it. And the, when Labour go on about selling or breaking up the NHS, we know Labour actually through the PFI have broken up the NHS massively. It's a lot of it is just privately run. Um, it just has one head of the NHS, but it's a lot of the, the services are privately run. Uh, but he started off the process of selling off an NHS hospital, Hitchinbrook Hospital. So he started the selling off of the very first NHS hospital. Um, although he says he never did it, he started the process. So whoever won the 2010 election, that hospital was sold and that was gone. So he did that. But also as health secretary, he wanted to um, put fluoride in people's drinking water but he was also involved with the company that supplied fluoride. So he, he had to step down from that position because of the controversy over it. So to me, he's, he's not been, he's got a track history of not uh, being credible, not doing what he's supposed to say, because um, the, the homeless issue, again, I've campaigned on the homeless issue at the two previous elections, and it's always been a big concern with me. And uh, because as a major city, I think um, having homeless people on the streets, one, it's not good for them. That's the first priority. Um, and obviously you can go into other things like sofa surfing and other things, but it's not a good image to, to bring businesses and tourism to the city anyway. You know, so each drive is two major things there that are an issue. Um, and he's failed. And all he's doing is he's pinning his hopes on this B network, the bus network which did need reform, it did need coming under one control. But I, from a trade union work in, in London with the transports there, I see major issues. And, and when he kept using the phrase, we want a London style bus network, I see the issues and I'm, I kept asking, well, what part of the London style? You know, uh, because there's a lot of issues uh, within London. So no, I think Andy Burnham's just really got no substance uh he's not really done much for greater manchester within the last seven years he's um he's recently been to japan to uh where well, there's a bit more controversy where he's signed a deal is it with fujitsu yeah. um to, uh, he says he's not signed a deal but he was pictured signing a deal to look at some computer systems and and given the issues with the post office at the moment it's like surely you should have backed away from that one for people uh, who don't know, it was Fujitsu who supplied the IT and the computer system that didn't work, that has led to post office masters and mistresses being sent to jail. And yeah. while this is out in the news, he goes to Japan to sign a contract for the same company that had innocent British people going to jail here. You couldn't make yeah. that up. No, he couldn't. Um, and to me, that's a sign of bad bad judgment you know and if that's what his judgments are like and then it, it shouldn't be don't be the mayor and then the, the one area the other area we've not touched on is don't forget greater manchester police yeah 
what what a, a fiasco that place is, you know. Only the second uh, force outside of Greater London to ever be put under special restrictions, yeah. uh, special measures. Um, and they've, they've been failures, you know. We, we've seen knife crime going up. I've seen it in my area. My my local area in Bay used to be nicknamed uh, Sleepy Hollow. And I, I used to work with the police quite often when I worked on the trams in public transport because I used to be police liaison at one point. But we've seen knife crime going up. Yeah. And but nothing seems to be being done uh, about it, you know. it's Every picture seems to be with Andy Burnham. He's opening a new bus depot at Oldham. He opened a new one at Middleton. He, so wants, to, he wants to be Greater Manchester's bus conductor because yeah. he never talks about crime. Mo he never talks about the fact he's actually the police crime commissioner of Greater Manchester. He, he yeah. ignores that and the responsibility he's, he's got under that role. He gave away to his deputy. He's not interested in crime whatsoever. And for me, that's his biggest failure in the mm. seven years he's been in power, is that. Well, when I first ran in 2017, uh, we was aware who, who he was going to appoint as his deputy mayor. Uh, because I, I get on with a few, well, at the time, 2017, a few of them have gone now. Um, I got on with quite a few Labour activists in the area and they were telling me who, who he was going to appoint. And some of them were former police officers and they were appalled at who he was going to appoint because mm. she had a bad track record herself and they couldn't believe he was going to appoint her. And so it came as no surprise when Grace Manchester Police fell into special measures. Um, and it's just one of those things where we've seen we've seen all the issues to do with Manchester, we've seen all the issues to do with Rochdale, as we, we've seen going on. Mm. And it's it's... Like you say, his photo shoots are all about the buses. It's nothing about is he out on the beach with the bobbies, uh, seeing if the child. Like recently, they had the knife arches out in Bury again. Yeah, you know, I I used to do when I was on public transport. I used to do the knife arches on with the public transport. To me, that would have been an ideal photo opportunity. Again, completely missed. Why aren't you there? Say, look, I know there's an issue with crime. Um, I'm out here speaking to the police, trying to tackle it. No, where is he? Yeah. It's, it's absolutely... His strategy has been, don't talk about being the police crime commissioner and maybe no one will realise I'm actually responsible yeah. for law and order in Greater Manchester. And to some extent, it's worked. It has worked because most people say to me, oh, what's he going to do about the police? And I go, he's ultimately their boss. He can sack yeah. the chief constable. He is the boss. Um, yeah. But he's got away with that completely. Now, what do you think about this rumour? This is what I'm hearing all the time, that he's done a deal for a safe seat in North Manchester for the general election. So if he wins this mayor election in a couple of weeks' time, he will resign in the autumn to stand for MP, get to Parliament, and basically he wants to stab Keir Starmer in the back and become Prime Minister. That's That's been going on for about 18 months or so. Uh, nearly two years, when, whenever he's been asked about whether he was going to stand as Labour leader, he's kind of avoided the question. Yeah. And, but that's at the time when Keir Starmer was, was uh, really low in the polls, not getting anywhere. Now it looks like Labour will be winning the general election. Mm. Um, so um, we do know he wants to be the Prime Minister. He will need to get a safe seat um, of any of that comes up. Whether he does it uh, as soon as he gets elected now, uh, I think it'll probably be next year. I think it'll be a case of um, wait and see how Starmer does in the election. You know, um, so yeah, it's been it's been on the it's been been muted for quite a while. Yeah. But I think it's all all down to timing at the moment. I don't think the timing is quite right because yeah. Starm Starmer's in front. They won't want to do anything to upset that. Yeah. Um, but then after the election, if there's if somebody retires in Greater Manchester area from a safe seat or even from Liverpool on a safe seat, yeah. you may say say him go for that one to get himself back in contention at Parliament. To, That's to interesting. That's interesting, and that makes that makes sense. That does make sense. Right. Yeah. Let's end on what you're doing now. I believe you're standing in Bevy as a local councillor. What mm. what ward and what are your aims for that ward? Well, I'm standing in Bessie's ward. That's my local ward. I've stood in there since 2009, every every election since 2009. My wife's standing in 
Hollywood Ward, next door to it in Presswich. Um, we used to live in Presswich prior to Bessie's, and it's where the mother currently lives. Um, so basically, we just want it's one of those wards that's consistently been labour for for decades. Um, and when I first started to stand in 2009, there was a Labour councillor who was really good. Everybody got him. We would class him as the old Labour, old Labour staff. And even the Conservatives actually said that, that, about him at meetings that he was such a good bloke, it's, it's a shame he was in the wrong party. That's what the way they used to say it. Um, but he's long gone. And we just seem to be being forgotten because when you've got, um, you only get change in your ward and things don't. If you've got a marginal ward mm. where people and like marginal councils where people think, oh, if I don't get this done, we might lose votes, we might lose yeah. the ward, we might lose the council. If it's overwhelmingly Labour or overwhelmingly Conservative, they don't seem to have to bother because they know they're going to get the votes. Yeah. And for me, it's a case of trying um, to be fair with, with doing other things. I've not really put out an awful lot last couple of years, but this year we're making a real effort on on it. Uh, we've got our leaflets on order to go out uh, this this time, and but our roads are in the state. That comes down to the councils, uh, as I've just said. Knife crime. Ours was in the local paper uh, recently. Although we did have to correct the Manchester News and the Berry Times because they said the knife crime, the knife issue that we just recently had was in Unsworth, and it wasn't. Uh, I live in Unsworth. It was actually Whitefield. Uh, Bit of a technicality, but um, one of those things where we believe the journalists should get things right. Mm. So, obviously, we've seen knife crime start to increase massively in our area. We've, we've seen uh, issues with the potholes. The bins are not getting emptied like they used to. They're constantly being, various ones are constantly being missed. The usual stuff that needs to be done. The paths are not getting done. Uh, we've recently had our road resurfaced, which was an absolute nightmare it was only done last year they blocked the grid, grids and it's already coming up mm. so i want to make sure that, uh, hold the council accountable because who they're appointing to do this work because they're going to have to come back and redo it mm. you know so some, some some of these employing contractors to do work that is not cost effective to the to the cap taxpayer and that needs addressing so there's that, quite a lot that's of why that we need. yeah that, that's why we need people like you and other people are standing across Greater Manchester local elections. So independent, small parties. Mm -hmm. If you get someone like that in your council, what you have then is a trouble causer. What you yes. have then is somebody who will shout out and point and go, that doesn't work because of you guys. You need to fix it. If you're just voting in their buddy, well, they're just going to be quiet and not do anything. So you need, you need disruptors. You need trouble causers in your council if you want better services. Yeah, and you, you need people who, like you say, that the, the issue, I'll go back to our party, our party doesn't have party whip. We don't you, we don't have that. It's always about what's best for your locality. Mm. So we'll, we'll change our basic. I have a big issue on green building on Greenbelt land. I believe we should not be building on Greenbelt yeah. land until brownfields have gone, you know. Um, so I, I campaign on that. But a lot of the local issues, um, yeah, we don't have a party whip system. So we, we're not tied. You go into the Labour Party, yeah. they have to, they say, oh, I get elected. But yeah, but then you have no say because you have exactly. to follow what the party whip says. They're just the, puppets. They're puppets. Yes, they have to do what the party says. Yeah. Otherwise, they get deselected for the next uh, yeah, exactly. election. You know? um, that's what we need to get away from, people pulling strings of politicians. Um, yeah. Well, I'll put your contact details and your election details in the description of this video. So if you live in Bevy, click on this, find out what Stephen is going to do. And, and, and if you live in his area, I would recommend you vote for him. We need disruptors. Well, I'm, um, I'm obviously I'm supporting you, Nick, uh, uh, because as we went, when we met at the uh, briefing, combined briefing, as I said, I watch a lot of your videos and I really like what a lot you said. And I think we've got a lot in common on it. Yeah. Um, and that's why I'd, I'd support you as, as mayor anyway. Thank you. Thank you. That's that's appreciated. Um, and that just goes to show that politicians from different parties that are, can get along, can put the people yeah. ahead of them and their careers and their parties, because that's what we're lacking. We're lacking people who put the people first. Yes, exactly. exactly. Excellent. Well, cheers for, cheers for coming on the podcast. Cheers, Nick. Thanks for I'll me. speak to you soon.
Cheers. Thank you. If you like that video, don't forget to subscribe to the channel, hit that notification bell and comment. And if you like what I'm saying about running for Mayor of Greater Manchester, then stick around, tell your family, tell your friends. It's the only way I'm going to have a chance of winning is a grassroots movement. So be part of that movement and hit that bell. Thanks.